SpaceX is slowly but surely dominating the whole space industry. They have become so big that even huge organizations like NASA are seeking their help. This is a big win for SpaceX, both in terms of money and trust. Recently, NASA entrusted SpaceX with a major task worth hundreds of millions that no other private company has ever been trusted to do before. What's funny about this is the timing. Just when Boeing is struggling to return astronauts from the International Space Station, SpaceX achieves another major milestone. This is more than just an embarrassment for Boeing. It highlights SpaceX's growing dominance and reliability. In this video, we will talk about this significant contract and how Musk reacted to this achievement. Before we delve any deeper, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about the Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. The International Space Station orbits the Earth approximately every 90 minutes, traveling at a speed of about 17,500 miles per hour. The space station consists of modules and components from various international partners, including NASA, Russia, Japan, Europe, and Canada. As the station approaches the end of its operational life, a safe and controlled deorbit process is necessary. Deorbiting is the process of bringing a spacecraft out of orbit, leading to its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. This ensures that the station does not become space debris, which could pose a significant hazard to other spacecraft and satellites. Historically, the deorbiting of large space structures has been managed carefully to avoid uncontrolled re-entries that could scatter debris over populated areas. Controlled deorbiting involves precise calculations and maneuvers to direct the spacecraft into a remote part of the ocean, often referred to as a spacecraft cemetery. In the past, space agencies have used various methods to deorbit satellites and smaller space stations. For instance, Russia successfully deorbited its Mir space station in 2001 by using a series of controlled burns to lower its orbit and direct it into the Pacific Ocean. Now, NASA has assigned SpaceX the critical mission of deorbiting the International Space Station. They awarded SpaceX an $843 million contract to build the United States deorbit vehicle. This specialized spacecraft will be responsible for safely deorbiting the International Space Station at the end of its operational life, ensuring a controlled re entry into Earth's atmosphere. The deorbit vehicle will likely draw upon SpaceX's experience with their Dragon spacecraft, which has been successfully transporting cargo and crew to and from the International Space Station for years. The initial estimate for the contract was over a billion dollars, but thanks to SpaceX's cost-effective reusable vehicles, the final amount was reduced to $843 million. Meanwhile, NASA astronauts are currently stranded on the International Space Station due to ongoing issues with Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. Originally scheduled to return to Earth on June 13th, astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams have seen their stay extended multiple times because of numerous technical faults with the Starliner. The problems began during the spacecraft's 25-hour flight to the International Space Station, where engineers detected five helium leaks and failures in five of the spacecraft's 28 thrusters. These issues have forced NASA and Boeing to delay the astronauts' return to at least June 26, as they work to troubleshoot and fix the spacecraft's malfunctions. The Starliner's journey has been filled with delays and repeated technical failures. This has naturally cast a shadow over Boeing's reliability in space missions. Meanwhile, Musk is not only focusing on revolutionizing the rockets, but also the engines. And he has recently came up with mind-blowing upgrades to the Raptor engines. Musk first got the idea for the Raptor engine back in 2009. Initially, they thought about using hydrogen and oxygen, but by 2012, they shifted to methane and oxygen. Methane is a better choice for missions to Mars because it can be produced there using the Sabatier reaction, which combines carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere with hydrogen. The first version, Raptor V1, started testing around 2014. This version had a thrust of about 225,000 pounds and used a lot of 3D printed parts to speed up development. It was a complicated engine, with lots of plumbing and sensors to help SpaceX learn how to control it. By 2022, SpaceX rolled out Raptor V2, and it marked a significant leap forward in rocket engine technology. This version was not only more powerful, but also simpler and lighter. 
the engineers at SpaceX streamlined the design by removing a lot of the extra plumbing and sensors that were necessary in the early versions. This reduction made the engine more flame-proof and heat-resistant, crucial for the extreme conditions it faces during launches. Raptor V2 increased its thrust to an impressive 230 tons, making it the most advanced and powerful engine SpaceX has in operation. This engine set a new record with a chamber pressure of 300 bar, surpassing previous records held by engines like the Russian RD-180, which operates at 267 bar. The Raptor V2's chamber pressure is not only the highest for any rocket engine ever built, but also contributes significantly to its performance and efficiency. To put this into perspective, the Space Shuttle main engine had a maximum chamber pressure of around 207 bar, which was considered groundbreaking during its time. The F-1 engines used on the Saturn V rocket, which took humans to the moon, had a chamber pressure of about 70 bar. These engines were powerful in their own right, but the advancements in materials, engineering, and design have allowed Raptor V2 to achieve higher pressures and efficiency. Although Raptor 2 sounds almost perfect, SpaceX isn't stopping there. They are already advancing to the next level with Raptor 3. Musk recently shared some exciting updates about this next-generation engine, which promises to bring even more improvements and efficiencies. Musk responded to a tweet about the impressive number of Raptor engines currently being produced, stating, We could build a lot more. But the next version of Raptor is really the one to scale up production. We begin testing it in McGregor within a week or so. One of the standout features of the Raptor 3 is its regenerative cooling system, which integrates secondary flow paths throughout the entire engine. This innovation eliminates the need for an external heat shield, a significant change from previous versions. Without the need for a heat shield, the engine's design becomes much simpler and lighter, reducing overall weight and complexity. This change also removes the necessity for over 10 tons of fire suppression systems that were previously required behind the engine heat shield. Testing of the new Raptor 3 engine is set to begin soon, promising consistent firings at SpaceX's McGregor test site. It's worth noting that around this time last year, SpaceX was conducting some of the first Raptor V3 firings. In May 2023, Musk tweeted, Congrats to the SpaceX propulsion team. Starship Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptors, so total thrust of 8,877 tons, or 19.5 million pounds. Although this test was essentially experimental, it laid the groundwork for the current, more developed Raptor V3. All integrated flight tests so far have used the Raptor 2 engine from the first flight to the fourth. There has been consistent improvement in both engine performance and the vehicle itself. However, occasional issues like early shutdowns during liftoff or the booster's landing burn persist. More testing and the new upgraded engine should help resolve these problems. During these tests, Raptor 2 demonstrated significant enhancements over its predecessor. For instance, during the second integrated flight test in November 2023, all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster ignited successfully and completed a full-duration burn during ascent, which was a notable achievement. This was a significant improvement from the first flight test in April 2023, where several engines failed during launch, and the vehicle's stages did not separate as planned, leading to an intentional detonation by SpaceX for safety reasons. During the third flight test in March 2024, all engines performed reliably during the launch, and the vehicle executed its maneuvers successfully. The upper stage of Starship, powered by six Raptor engines, reached a maximum altitude of about 90 miles and achieved a top speed of roughly 24,000 kilometers per hour. However, the mission ended prematurely due to a loss of telemetry just before the planned engine cutoff. The consistent issues with early shutdowns and landing burns made SpaceX work even harder on the new version of the Raptor engines. It will be fascinating to see Raptor V3 in action during a full flight test. Fortunately, we won't have to wait long, as testing is expected to begin within weeks. Raptor V3 has ambitious goals regarding power and propulsion. Initially, the Raptor engine's thrust was 185 tons force with Raptor 1. With Raptor 2, this increased to 230 tons force. 
Now, the target for Raptor 3 is 280 tons force. A more powerful engine allows for a larger Starship variant, meaning it can carry more weight into space. For instance, with Raptor V3, a significantly taller Starship 3 could place over 200 metric tons into orbit in a fully reusable mode. This means the rocket can be launched, returned to Earth, and be used again, which cuts down costs compared to single-use rockets. The Starship system is designed to be a fully reusable two-stage-to-orbit spacecraft. The first stage, known as the Super Heavy Booster, is 70 meters tall and houses 33 Raptor engines. The second stage, the Starship spacecraft, is 50 meters tall and is equipped with six Raptor engines. These engines provide the necessary thrust to lift the entire spacecraft off the ground and into the upper atmosphere. The booster generates more than 16 million pounds of thrust, making it the most powerful rocket stage ever built. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.